gates. My husband, Martin, was born June 3, 1858, right here in Preble County. He was the only survivor of eight children born to George and Louisa Gates. He lived in Lewisburg since 1883 and occupied his home on North Commerce Street for 60 years. Martin was a farmer, a telegrapher, and a store clerk at various periods in his life. In 1895, we were married. Although we never had any children, we were blessed with each other's company. Um, after 42 years of marriage, I died in 1937, and Martin lived alone ever since. He did his own housework and cooking. He took daily walks to and from the post office and an occasional bus trip to Dayton. In 1897, he was getting out of his wagon and slipped and fell, hurting his spine. Poor Martin never fully recovered from it. On January 24, 1946, he had a roof fire that came from sparks on the chimney. The firemen quickly put it out and limited the damage to about $25. I recall a time in 1885 that Martin received the first telegraph message here in Lewisburg. He was a member of the village council for two terms and spearheaded the movement for the construction of sidewalks. So all of you that walk home from school on the sidewalks think of my husband Martin. On September 16, 1950, Martin fell at home and broke his hip. October 12th, Martin stayed in a nursing home for a week but just couldn't recover and he passed on October 17, uh, 1950. My name is George Horner. I was born on April 9, 1836 in Montgomery County to William and Ellen Horner. <clears throat> My wife's name was Elizabeth House and we lived on the east side of Preble County Line Road, which is actually in Montgomery County. Um, we lived there for 45 years. Uh, together we had eight children, there were six daughters and two sons. The two sons were uh, in the furniture and undertaking business in Lewisburg, so we had close ties to Lewisburg through our, our two sons. It was common back then for furniture business and undertaking to be common because the caskets were made of wood, just like the furniture was. Um, on, and part of the reason that I, I'm dressed in Civil War gear with the, the rifle is because I fought in the Civil War and that was a big part of my life. Uh, on August 8, 1862, I was 26 years old, and I enlisted in the 93rd Regiment, Company H of the Ohio Volunteer Infantry, which basically was a branch of the Union Army then. Um, I served three years in the Civil War under Captain Matthias Jesher, and unfortunately this left my wife at home for it was three small children for the three years I was in the military. Um, during the war, I was involved in uh, several battles and suffered several injuries. Uh, there was the Battle of Chickamauga, where I lost most of my hearing because I was too close to the cannon fire. And, uh, and then there was a battle called Missionary Ridge and the Battle of Chattanooga. But unfortunately, the last battle I was in was called Kennesaw Mountain. And that's where I had one finger shot off of my left hand, like this. And you can see that in the, in the picture I passed around. And I also got shot in my right shoulder while I was loading my muzzle loader rifle, like I have here. Um, later on, after, after those injuries, in my enlistment, I was stricken with typhoid fever. And, I, and this is why we were marching through the South. And I wasn't able to keep up with the, with the rest of the troops, so they just left me for dead. Unfortunately, some Southern strangers uh, took me in for six weeks and, and uh, nursed me back to health. Um, and eventually word got to my wife where I was actually located and she tried to get some of the neighbors to come down and get me to bring me home, but she couldn't get anybody to do it because the Civil War was still in progress. So she took on the hazardous journey herself and, and came down to the south and, and uh, brought me back home. I, after that, uh, while I was still at home, I was honorably discharged on May 25th of 1865, almost three years in the military. Uh, so after a while, we moved to West Sonora, and that was in 1899, and lived up there. West Sonora, you know, is a little, little village uh, up just north of this, us here. And then we moved to Lewisburg in 1915. Unfortunately, I only lived in Lewisburg for two years, 
and and then I died. I, apparently, I came down with uh, stomach cancer or something similar to that. And uh, apparently, it was a shock to everybody because uh, I was in pretty good health up until that point when I suddenly passed away. Uh, my death was on May 13, 1970, excuse me, at the age of 81. So that's my story. And I'm the oldest daughter of William and Maud Brown. I had a sister, Ellen, and we all lived in the library upstairs. And my father was a doctor, and he, he had his practice downstairs where he saw all the people. And uh, at that time, they didn't have as much drugs and medicine to take care of things that uh, we do now. And my sister, Ellen, was only 19 when she died, and she died of tuberculosis. So that is Ellen. And then my mom is Maud, and my father is William, and this is me, Anna. And uh, my father was also active with the school board and the first school in Lewisburg, and also my mother. And uh, she died at, at an early age also. And then after that, my father died, and three months after that, I had passed away. But I had belonged to a fraternity. And, and their motto was, I always forget it, a public library for Lewisburg. So, uh, Ellen donated the library that's there now, and she donated a lot of her books. So you can thank the Brown family, and especially Ellen, for the library. So when you go there, and there's a picture of
So my name is Dorothea Pearl Mount Castle, and everybody called me Pearl. I was born November 13th, 1903, and that was just 34 days before Orville and Wilbur Wright made their flight in um, over the sand dunes in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. My parents were Isaac and Olive Mount Castle. I had two brothers and five sisters, and I was not expected to live because I had a disease called polio. But do you know, I lived until I was 103 years old. And so for somebody who wasn't expected to live, that was pretty good. And people said sometimes I live by the rules, but sometimes I live by my own rules. So that's how I maybe overcame that. So I never married and I graduated from Miami University in 1940. And I went on to be a teacher. I taught here in Lewisburg, I taught in Eaton, and I also taught in Dayton. And teaching is the thing that I was the most proud of in my, um, in my life. I really enjoyed teaching. And I had a way of charming kids and getting them to do things that maybe they didn't know that they could do. And I really liked teaching fifth and sixth graders because they weren't babies anymore, but they were still uh, young enough that they weren't too smart elegant. And so I kind of liked that age. I also taught Sunday school for 64 years and I drove my own car until I was 98 years old. Um, I also lived in the same house for 93 years. I lived right outside of Lewisburg and um, I raised sheep and I had a pond and people liked to come and fish in my pond. So when I got to be about 100 years old, I decided that, you know, I would just kind of take things uh, one day at a time because you just never knew what the next hour would bring. And so I did. I took one day at a time and just hoped for the best. I like to read and I like to write poetry and I like to sit down at an old piano and play a few tunes. And I loved um, to sing old songs. I had music to my toes, you know, they used to say. I loved homemade jelly and I loved flowers. And most of all, I loved people. That was the thing I loved the most. And so um, I lived a long life. I died at 103 years old on December the 10th of 2006. And I passed away at the home that I'd lived in for so long. And I'm buried right over there. And up until April of this year, I was the oldest person buried here at the cemetery. But now there are two other people that are a little bit older than me. My name is Joseph Thomas Alex. Here in the picture. I was born in 1886 in Rockingham County, Virginia. My parents were William and Nanny Alley. We came to Lewisburg in 1916. I had five brothers and two sisters, and I was never married. I knew everybody in town, and you know how I knew that? I passed newspapers on my bicycle. I also kept records of hobbies my hobby was keeping records. I knew when everybody was born. I knew when the anniversaries, special events in the church, special events in the town, and everything. And I would always say happy birthday to people as I met them. <clears throat> I also hauled freight, which supplied the local restaurants and the stores here in town of stuff they needed to sell to the people. And I also was interested in astrology. But the best thing I was known for, I was a champion solver of crossword puzzles for the Miami Valley. My record for one day working crossword puzzles was 49 puzzles in one day. In 1939, I solved over 3,000 crossword puzzles. And in 1940, I solved over 2,222 puzzles. Then I went to war. In 1943, I served in, in the service. When I got done with the service, I came back home and went to the post office. and worked at the post office. So guess what? I got to meet everybody again. Everybody, how many people get their mail at the post office? Yeah, so I got to meet everybody at the post office. But they're working at the post office. I got a hernia and I had to have a major operation and I got complications and surgery and passed away in November of 1961 and I'm buried here in the cemetery. Now, the crossword puzzles 
is one of my favorite passions. And I give your teacher crossword puzzles for your age. And there's a contest at the library. Now you fill out the crossword puzzles, give them back to your teacher or to Mrs. Davison in the library, and then you get a prize.